Hi, my name is Tyler Bragginson, and I'm an Applications Manager for Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create and utilize sketch blocks inside of SOLIDWORKS. Blocks allow you to save a group of entities to reuse over and over again throughout multiple designs. Blocks are extremely helpful when working with things such as logos that we might want to incorporate into multiple models. Here I have the Hawkridge Systems logo, which I've modified slightly for a project I'm currently working on. I'd like to take this logo and save it as a block so that I can reuse it on my actual design. To begin with, I want to take a look at the Blocks toolbar. This is the easiest way to access all of my Blocks tools in one location. To turn on the Blocks toolbar, I'll right click on one of my current toolbars, such as the Command Manager, and turn on the Blocks toolbar. This will appear in the last place your toolbar was used, and you can see I have several block options. The first thing I need to do is utilize this make block to turn my current individual sketch entities into a single block. I'll select the make block command with my sketch active and it's going to ask me which entities I would like to turn into the block. I can quickly use a box select to grab all of my entities in this sketch and I can go ahead and accept it with just that. Before I go ahead and turn this into a block I want to use this other option to specify an insertion point. The insertion point is going to be where your cursor is with this block anytime you try to use the block. It's also the location where the block will rotate or scale about when you're placing it. To change the insertion point, which you can see designated here by the blue triad, I just grab the point and relocate it. I'm going to drop it right here onto the center point of that construction line, which should be the middle, the bottom edge of my logo. That'll now become the insertion point. That's it for creating a block. I'll go ahead and hit OK and I've now generated a block. You'll notice that the color of the entities change. This is based on your settings for colors for inactive sketch entities. It also creates a block in my tree. It'll go to the next available block number, which happens to be block one, and then it adds the instance number in case you use multiple instances of this block within your design. Now that I have the block, I wanna go ahead and save it out so I can use it on my other design project. To save the block, I'll select it in my tree, and then I'll come down to my toolbar and choose Save Block. Now I can specify exactly where I want to save this, so I'll save it to my Blocks folder, and I'll call it HRS Logo. You'll likely want to create a specific folder where you store all of your blocks, that way they're in a single location. You can even add this folder to your design library. With the logo saved, I can now use that block in other projects. I'll switch into my current design. This is where I now want to apply that logo. I'll shift my focus so I'm looking right at my sidewall here. And I want to go ahead and apply the logo to that. I'll start a sketch on the correct plane. And from inside the sketch, I can go ahead and insert a block. Down here from my block toolbar, I'll choose Insert Block. You'll see any blocks that are currently in your model, or you can go ahead and choose to browse to a block you haven't used yet. I'm going to browse to my Blocks folder and choose that HRS logo. Hit Open, and now you can see the insertion point is right where my cursor is for placing this block. I'm going to go ahead and place it straight above the origin, somewhere nicely located on my sidewall and I'll click to place it. I can continue to place as many instances as I would like. When I'm done, I'll go ahead and hit the OK to finish placing that block. Now if you want to make any changes to the block, I can select the block, and now you can see that I have the ability to scale the block. Again, this will scale by the insertion point, so if I want to make it twice as large, I can go ahead and type in 2, or I can drop it back down to the original size, and I can also rotate the block if I need to change the orientation. Leaving those default, I'll go ahead and accept the block placement. Now certain features require you to have actual individual entities. And because this is a block, it's a single entity. If I click on one of the entities, it grabs all of them. So if I want to return this to single individual entities, or I simply don't want it to show as a block in my tree, I can explode that block. I do that by clicking on the block and choosing Explode Block. This will take apart the block and return it to its individual entities. Now it shows up as if I just sketched all these in entities individually on this design. 
With that, I'm going to use a split line to actually put the logo into my sidewall. Now let's add a new appearance. I'm going to add white appearance to the entire split line and then I'll re-add that rubber to just this face as well as these inside faces. You could also apply the white to the individual faces of the logo, but it's a little bit faster when I only have to apply it to four faces instead of each individual face of the letters. Now my logo is on the sidewall of my tire, and I've utilized sketch blocks to expedite the process. Blocks may also be used in drawings for things such as annotations and symbols, as well as assemblies to control entire layouts. Take a look at those videos on our YouTube page if you'd like to learn more about other uses of blocks. Today we went over how to create and use sketch blocks. Thanks for watching.